I believe the historical context uh, gives uh, helps inform uh, about Islam and Muhammad and, and how that developed. Uh, Arabia was basically surrounded by Christian empires on all sides, which they never conquered Arabia because there wasn't much there besides desert and camels to conquer. And so uh, it was kind of a, a no man's land, uh, so to speak. Uh, and uh, on the Arabian Peninsula were Jewish tribes that continued there from the Jewish Roman Wars. Uh, Christian hermits, which come up throughout the Islamic uh, narratives, the life of, of Muhammad, uh, the Hadith. And, uh, and so Muhammad in his early days was very much influenced by the Jewish tradition, by the Jewish tribes in Arabia. And so his message was very uh, Jewish, he understood himself as in line with the Jewish prophets. He hoped he would be received by the Jews as one of their prophets, maybe even their uh, final prophet, their kind of messianic figure. Uh, he didn't have a lot of exposure to the Christians, uh, 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 but enough exposure that he sent his followers across uh, the Red Sea to Abyssinia, Abyssinia under persecution. Um, and so his early messages in the Quran are very apocalyptic, extremely eschatological and focus, uh, uh, very focused on the age to come, the life to come. It's only later in his career that uh, things began to focus on this life and, and, and uh, fighting for uh, this life. Uh, before Medina, in his early years, it's very... Uh, restrained towards his enemies, uh, even though he's being persecuted, God will vindicate you on the last on the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. And so it's only later in his life when he moves to Medina that he begins to break with the Jewish tradition. That he begins, he turns the the focus of prayer from Jerusalem to Mecca, the opposite direction. When he's in Medina. He begins to, instead of entreating the favor of the Jews, he begins to denounce the Jews. It's only later in his career that he begins to use the language of hypocrites, the Jews uh, and also the Christians who say they believe Muhammad's the prophet, but they don't really believe. And so a lot of things happen later in Muhammad's life that he begins to break with the Jewish tradition. And I believe he a lot of his ideas that he adopts later in his life in Medina, he borrows from the, the Christian traditions that surround him. So there's never any language around the kingdom. It's never mentioned in the Quran. It's only in generations after the caliphate that kingdom of God and, and begins to be incorporated into the commentaries. And I believe a lot of that was incorporated from uh, Byzantine Christianity and that theology that developed after Constantine, which realized the Jewish hope. So a lot of uh, Islamic theology began to develop along the same lines as Augustine, a kind of temporal kingdom now, which fulfilled the Jewish hope unto an ethereal kingdom in the life to come, which they termed paradise or the eternal gardens.